so now uh, I'm ready. So uh, thank okay. you for the uh, thank you for the invitation and thank you for all coming. And um, I'm a theoretical biophysicist, and I provide predictive models in collaboration with experimental testing to establish how the mechanics coupled with biochemical reactions in defining cell functions. So um, we are currently working on a number of projects, uh, including cell adhesion, uh, maybe traffic, and cell division. And today I'm going to focus on one particular project uh, concerning bacteria genome partition. As you may know that uh, bacteria genome consists of chromosomes and the plasmids. The chromosome is typically condensed into a rod-shaped structure called the nucleoid. And the plasmids are extra chromosomal genetic material that carry the important genes for bacteria to cope with the, the stress conditions. So the physical partition of plasmids is important for bacterial cell survival. And for our human perspective, and, and it is also an important target for the antibiotic treatment. So for high copy number uh, plasmids, the random diffusion will be sufficient to make sure that each of the other cells get at, an, at least one copy when cell divide. But for low copy number uh, plasmids, for example, if you only have two copy here, active process are needed to ensure the partition fidelity. Otherwise, uh, one can easily end up two copies in one daughter cells and the, the other daughter uh, does not. So for most of um, low copy number plasmids, they are uh, active, actively partitioned by the pari partition machinery that essentially have uh, three components. So PAR A is the ADPase that non specifically bind to the nucleoid. And the PAR B is the adapter protein that on one hand, bind to the central mirror region of the plasmid called the PARIS. And on the other hand, the interact when the chromosomal bound the PARI and ADPases. So uh, this tripartite machinery is a protocol in, is a prototype model system and that people has been using to dissect the fundamental principles of bacterial genome partition for the past uh, 30 to 40 years. Um, however, the underlying mechanism of the partition is still not well understood. So uh, the, uh, the partition machinery can drive the very diverse motility pattern. For example, it can drive the so-called pole-to-pole oscillation of the plasmid. Here, the part A is in, is in green and the plasmid is in magenta and the nucleoid is in uh, cyanide. Basically, the plasmid uh, traveled back and forth while, while chasing the party. So there are many uh, film-based uh, mathematical models has been proposed to explain this oscillation. Uh, in, in a way, it's very similar to the microtubule spindle-based uh, chromosome and oscillations in malignant cells. But uh, now we know that, that the part form film at all under the physiological condition. And more importantly, it turns out that only 1% of cells have this kind of oscillation in wild type. So it seems that after all, we, are, we have been barking at the wrong tree. For the most of the cases that the plasmid is on, constantly on the move uh, along the surface of the nucleus, when the plasmid it replicates, the sisters will move apart persistently and then position themselves when the segregation distance that is half of the nuclear lens. Segregation by half of the nuclear lens is crucial for ensuring the partition fidelity. The, the reason is that the plasmid replication and partition is not coupled to the cell cycle. As the a nucleoid keep, keep elongating before the cell division, the replicated uh, plasmid can be anywhere along the lens of the nucleoid. So segregation by half of the nuclear lens can uh, ensure the replicated plasmid can always end up a two different half of the cells, and that's ensuring the partition fidelity. Now, the question here is that the plasmid, it typically is um, 100 nanometer in size, while the nucleoid is typically several microns. Now, how does the plasmid know um, uh, the, the size of the nucleus? And fundamentally, the, the questions are, what is the physical mechanism of the party mediated directed motilities? And how does this partition machinery adapt the segregation distance uh, to the half length of the nucleoid? And, and at the same time, 
ensuring the partition fidelity against the noise. To address these questions, we will combine theory with an experiment. Now, let me first tell you uh, uh, what we found. In collaboration with the in vitro experimental testing by Kyushi um, um, uh, Mizuki, we proved that the PARI partition uh, machinery works as the PARI concentration reading based branding ratchets that drives the directed um, motilities. For the second question, in collaboration with the in vivo experimental uh, um, by Zhang Yi, we show that not only the PARI partition works near a critical point in the parameter space that adapts the segregation distance to half of the uh, nuclear mass, but the plasmid itself localized this PARI to ensure the partition fidelities. So now let me tell you how we get there. My starting point is in the recent uh, uh, in visual reconstitution experiment by Kyoshi uh, Mizuki. His lab uh, successfully reconstituted the minimum side of the partition component that are capable of driving directed motility. Here, the non specific DNA substrate is covered when part A and ATPases. A micron size magnetic bead is, co co is covalently bound to a part B. A magnetic, field, a magnetic field is turned on to confine the bead near to the surface of the substrate. So we observe the, uh, uh, the subsequent dynamics by turf microscopy. So upon interacting uh, when the PARI ATPase on the substrate, the microbead start to move along the surface of the substrate with, uh, in a persistent and directed manner when the PARI depletion zones trailing behind. And to explain this directed motility without the formation of PARI filaments, we build the, the mechanical chemical models by integrating the, 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 um, the, both the mechanical and the biochemical aspect of the partition process uh, into a coherent picture. So the biochemical study shows that uh, the nuclear bond PAR A ATPs will bind to the cargo bond PAR B. There the PAR B will trigger the bond dissociation and convert this PAR A into a, a distinct K functional state called the PI of D. And the part of D has a very weak binding affinity to the substrate. So this part of D will rapidly dissociate from the substrate. At this stage, we know that the part of D is still in the ATP bound state. More importantly, it takes a long time for this part of D to regain its ability uh, to bind to the substrate again. So this time delay turns out to be the most important factor in, the, in dictating the directed motility. We will come back to this point. Uh, later. And um, from the, from the uh, mechanical perspective, we consider that the issue of pari puppy bonds as the elastic springs. So the motion of, of the bead will make some of the bond uh, get stretched and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the dissociate. And at the same time, the new bond will form. We know that the molecule is soft uh, uh, enough so that the thermal energy could extend its conformation, for example, uh, this part B. Now, uh, since this part B has already extended its arm, it will more than likely bind to the part A further away than to the part A direct underneath. In doing so, the newly formed chemical bonds will be pre-stretched. And the thermal energy is utilized to preload the newly uh, formed bonds. Okay? So taken together, when this mechanical chemical model will carry out the agent-based stochastic simulations. In our simulation, there are many pari puppy bonds connecting the bead to the substrate. At any time point, they form and they dissociate stochastically in according to the reaction schemes that we talked about in the previous slides. So, so the sum of the bond elastic forces over the surface of the cargo will give rise to a net force that will drive the motion of the bead, which will in turn impact the bond formation and the dissociation. And, and Therefore, the, the mechanics of our chemistry of the party 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 bending are coupled through the motion of the bead in our model. So here is the typical, typical simulation uh, result. So uh, initially, the, the couple bound part B will interact when the substrate bound part A and ADPSs. And you see from the top and the green dashed line uh, mark the boundary of, of the bead. 
So the magenta color uh, uh, represents the part A ATP on the substrate. When it bind to the part B, it, the color will change from uh, magenta to cyanide. Okay. So as the part B start to deplete the part A from uh, from underneath, the the uh, bead will become less and uh, less tethered to the substrate. This will allow the random diffusion of the bead to kick the bead in one particular direction. And in doing so, the, the bead can establish more bond at front as compared to that at the back, since most of the part A is now largely depleted from underneath. This will put the bead forward, and this will break symmetry. And since it takes a while for the disengaged part A to rebind to the substrate, the forward motion of the bead will create a part A depletion zone trailing behind, just like a snow plow. This will further perpetuate the directed motility, just like we observe in experiment. So this is essentially is a brand new ratchet. So which we also predict that the initial direction of the symmetry breaking will be random. And indeed, in our experiment in the same field, um, and the trajectories of different beads follow the different directions. In that sense, the bead could in principle move in all different directions, but after choosing a particular one, they will persist in this directions, okay? So uh, a brief summary here. So we provide evidence that the party um, partition machinery drives the directed motility by the party concentr concentration gradient based the branding ratchet. And the cargo basically create and follow the party concentration and gradient that will further rectify the branding motion of the cargo into a directed motility. The key here is the time delay that uh, in the part refilling of the deformation zones that will control the uh, symmetry. So we have many uh, unique predictions from the model that have been verified by our experiment they, are, uh, they has been uh, published. So for the time sake, I'm not going to talk about that. So, so for the rest of my talk, I'm going to focus on how the part A partition plays out in vivo and how it always adapts the segregation distance to half of the nuclear lens. So to that end, we're going to improve our model in two factors. First, the stimulation domains now will have a closed boundary and that elongates uh, at a constant rate to mimic the nucleate uh, elongation. And this closed boundary will confine the, 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 the range of the motion. And second, in, according to the experiment, the party concentration is kept, uh, uh, is kept as a constant so that the new pi molecules will generate over time in the model. So the constant pi concentration will make the pi refilling events more relevant in vivo than its corresponding in vitro condition. So here we calculate the dynamic phase diagrams of, pi, uh, of the plasmid um, motilities that are characterized by the pi refilling rate Ka and the pi pi b bound dissociation rate K off. When the pi refilling uh, is relatively slow, the cargo can undergo the Pole to pole oscillation, which is essentially the same directed motilities in the corresponding in visual conditions. It's just that the closed boundary here now will prevent further, further motion uh, beyond this boundary, and that's going to allow the part reefing event to uh, catch up and reverse the motion to the other side. On the other hand, when <coughs> the part reefing rate increases, the partition machinery could drive the so-called directed motility, uh, the directed segregation for the replicated uh, plasmids. So here, the two plasmids, right after the replication, they will move apart persistently for a while and then stop, just like they observed the uh, plasmid partition process. What happened here is that um, when the part B starts to deplete the part A from Underneath, in the eyes of the, each of the sister plasmids, its local party concentration is already asymmetric. And this will size of the directed motility towards its own pole. While moving apart, the partition still operates in such a parameter uh, regimes that the party weaving events will eventually catch up and re establish the symmetry and eventually stop the directed motility. And now the next question, why do we care about the, the different, uh, different uh, motility patterns of the plasma? Well, 
the different motility pattern will differ drastically in um, uh, segregation in, in the plasmid partition uh, beta matrix. Here we calculate, you know, a model the percentage of time in the simulated trajectory that the two plasmids will in two different half of the cells. And we use this probability to inf as a proxy to infer the segregation fidelity. So the, as you see, the directed segregation is the sure thing. And for reference, the diffusion will give roughly about the 50% uh, of the segregation probabilities. The portable oscillation is an interesting case. It's gave a large uh, variation. The reason is that during the oscillation, the, uh, when the two um, plasmids are not in exact high down uh, collision course, they will intact through the uh, power depletion zones. In doing so, the two depletion zones will coalesce and the two plasmids will travel together. This will compromise the partition fidelity. So to ensure the uh, partition fidelity, you do not want the partition to operate in the portable oscillation regimes. And this is going to widen only 1% of cells in the wild type have this kind of oscillation. On the other hand, you do not want to be too far away from this uh, oscillation regime, neither. The reason is that the further away from it, the more the power refilling events will become dominant. And consequently, the segregation distance uh, between the two plasmids will uh, reduce. Now, remember, the plasmid is constantly on the move. So it's replicated anywhere along the lines of the nuclei. So if the two, if the replicated um, plasmid not the initial at the mid cell, then when a small segregation distance, then there will be a higher chance that the, the both plasmids will end up in the same half of cells and that will compromise the partition uh, fidelity. Therefore, the, um, the partition fidelity requires the partition machinery to operate in a very special parameter region that close to but it's not in the portable oscillation regime. So now I'm going to reframe this partition problem in the lens of uh, statistical mechanics. And now let's define the order parameter of the plasmid segregation as the maximum segregation in between the two plasmids that's normalized by the nuclear lines. Now let's first uh, focus on this line first. And um, as you see, the order parameter will be very small when the system is deep into the direct segregation regime. And, and it increases continuously towards the pole to pole oscillation regime. It's very similar to the second order phase transition. And, uh, and at, the, at the tipping point between the two uh, phases, the variation of the order parameter uh, uh, maximizes. And when the, when the maximum correlation lens between the two classmates, okay? And that is by definition is a critical point. So the, the model actually predict that uh, partitioning at this critical point will always adapt the segregation distance of the plasma to half of lens of the nucleate. And uh, furthermore, the, the model predict that at this critical point, the individual plasma does not uh, confine to um, a fixed location or undergo the large scale portable oscillation. And instead, it will exhibit the solitary motion, uh, basically, it's a long stride followed by the limited excursion. Okay? And more importantly, the model predict that the, uh, the at this critical point, the, the distribution of the order parameter will follow the highly non-Gaussian distribution. To test this prediction, my collaborator Jiang Yi, uh, he used the two-color uh, live cell experiment to track the F plasmid, uh, which is one of the low copy number uh, plasmids in uh, E. coli. Our data confirmed that the plasmid segregation indeed adapts to half of the nuclear lens. And the uh, individual plasmid and, and have this kind of a distinctive jumpy motion. And more importantly, the um, distribution of the older parameter indeed followed a non, highly non-Gaussian distribution as we predicted. So, so uh, together we provide evidence that the, the low copy number plasmid partition operates near the critical point. 
it always allows the segregation distance to adapt to half of the length of the nuclei. So the physical na nature of this critical point is the following. Although the party party uh, interaction is local, the plasmid generate the party depletion zones that act as the sphere of power. At the critical point, the party, uh, the party depletion and refilling events will balance out and the resulting spheres of power will overlap and expand the entire lens of the nucleate. And this allows the plasmids to not only sense the presence of uh, each other, but the boundary of the system. And, and that how it sense the lens of the nucleate. So the next que question is that given the very sensitive nature of the critical point dynamics, how to ensure the robustness. Our experiment shows that actually the party concentration varies more than tenfold from self cell and yet the segregation distance is totally insensitive to the party concentration uh, variation. Uh, in contrast, in our current experiment, just increasing the party concentration of few fold will significantly uh, reduce the segregation distance. So to explain, to explain this robustness, we need to improve our model. So the leading hypothesis is that uh, since the party can bind to the party, and therefore it should bind to the uh, plasmid, we therefore hypothesize that the plasma itself can localize the party, and this will create a local uh, environment that buffer against the party concentration in, uh, variation in the bulk. And indeed, uh, by incorporating this localization effect, our, um, our um, extended uh, model could indeed explain this um, uh, partition fidelity against the large scale party variations, as uh, we observed in the experiment. More importantly, our model predicts that the uh, partition fidelity requires the party to localize around the plasmids when several fold accumulation against the uh, background. And to test this prediction, uh, John Yip used the triple color left cell uh, uh, imaging uh, when a low expression of party. Uh, our data uh, uh, confirmed that the party uh, indeed co localized when the plasmid and quantitatively confirmed our model predictions. And together, we suggest that the, the plasmid mediated party localization will underline the robustness of buffering this near critical point um, pa uh, partition against the party concentration variations. So this leads to a final question. Where does the party concentration variation come from? Our data actually shows that the party actually oscillates from pole to pole, but it does not correlate with the motion of the plasma. On the one hand, it means that the two daughter cells will inherit a very different amount of party upon the cell division, which explains the party uh, concentration variation from cell to cell. But, but on the other hand, it's uh, uh, deepened the puzzle. The reason is that we know the party part B genes are auto regulated. Uh, here, the, the levels of part and part B will directly regulate their own gene expression, suggesting a highly tight control um, over the party amounts. So, in the future, we're going to uh, try to dissect how and why the party uh, oscillates. So to summarize, and uh, let's put our funding in, in some perspective. Uh, it's has been proposed that uh, the bi uh, biological system operates near a critical point in the primary space so that it can sensitively adapt and, and the response to the environmental changes. While the evidence is, is uh, uh, emerging uh, from different fields, they are mainly statistical uh, influence without the real physical Mechanisms. More importantly, the near critical point, the near uh, critical point operation will be highly su uh, susceptible to um, stochastic flux intuitions. How to ensure both the sensitivity and the robustness is an open question. So here we provide some evidence and a physical mechanism that a uh, low copy number of uh, plasma partition uh, as a brand ratchet. And this ratcheting operates near the critical point that always adapts to the segregation uh, to the half of the nuclear lens. And more importantly, we provide some evidence that the plasmage uh, localize the party and this spatial uh, uh, control 
ensures the partition fidelity against the variation of party concentration. And we suggest that perhaps the spatial temporal regulation over this near critical point operation might provide a general mechanism to ensure both the sensitivity and the robustness of a stellar process. And uh, uh, when that, I would like to uh, thank the people who are involved in this, in this project and, and also our founding agencies. And now I'm happy to take um, questions. Thank you, Jian, for a really wonderful talk. So there are some questions in the chat and I'm going to try to ask as many of them as I can in the time we have. So the first question is for, uh, from Jing Chen. And yeah. she's asking in the trajectories uh, uh, show, the bead mm -hmm. follows, uh, the trajectory show that the bead follows a direction highly persistently, even though there are fluctuations over short time scales. Right. At an instantaneous moment, uh, if random fluctuations already change the direction slightly, what would bring it back? Well, I mean, uh, that's a good question. Uh, that depends on how many party puppy bonds. What we have he here is that uh, essentially the, there's a lot of party puppy uh, bonds forming at the front of the bead. So uh, the bond is in a pre-stretched uh, condition. So if you, uh, if there's the variation in the uh, vertical directions, the elasticity of the bond will push it back. It's like a, a elastic spring. And that will keep the bead uh, in the strict trajectory. But of course, uh, when the bond number uh, reduces, you will see a more and more uh, uh, irregular trajectories. And uh, uh, I hope that answered the question. All right. Uh, then there's a follow-up question uh, uh, by Greg Huber and a related question by Jing again. So Greg is asking, is the B trajectory described by a large persistence length in analogy with the polymer with a large bending modulus? Right. In the in vivo, in the in visual condition, the persistent uh, running could be uh, several microns to tens of microns if you have a high enough party concentra concentration. In vivo, uh, the persistent run lines is just uh, like uh, 500 nanometer to maximum a micron. Uh, so, but that also depends on the party reefing rate and also the, 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 uh, the total party concentration. Uh, yeah. And I guess Jing's related question was, does this mean that the behavior persists for different nu nucleoid lengths? Uh, good question. Uh, there is upper limit of the nuclear lens. And uh, uh, for the current um, simulation, uh, the upper limit would be uh, a few microns. And uh, beyond that, uh, the, the plasmid will still persistent uh, undergo directed segregation, but they won't adapt half of the lens of the Mm -hmm. 